Hello, we are five students studying material science at Arizona State University. For our lab class on materials characterization, we are going to provide you with a video on two electrical characterization techniques, the Hall effect and the four point probe. I'm Ben. Andrew. Bad. I'm Kai Wen. Pooja. First, we're going to talk about the experimental objectives for using these characterization techniques. Then we are going to discuss the scientific background behind these techniques. Next, we'll look at the techniques themselves and the information they can provide us with. And finally, we will be discussing the applications of these characterization devices and what we use them for. The four-point probe and Hall effect measurement device are two important electrical characterization tools. They are both used to measure the conductivity or resistivity of a sample. The four-point probe relies on Ohm's law to do so, while Hall effect measuring devices use the principle of balancing Lorentz forces on charge carriers to obtain their drift speed and the charge carrier density. Both of these techniques can provide similar data about the conductivity of a sample. In the case of our experiment, this analysis was conducted on a sample which simulated a thin film transistor. The diagram shown here demonstrates the structure of such a transistor. This experiment was novel in that it used microwave annealing to anneal the metal layers and form a thin oxide film on top of the sample. Different annealing times were performed to test the effectiveness of the methodology. It was predicted that a well-annealed sample would have minimal delamination, yielding higher conductivity. The four-point probe and Hall effect tests were performed to test these conductivities. In metals, energy band is partially filled. The highest state filled by electron is called Fermi level. To become conductive, electrons must be excited into states with higher energy. Unlike insulators or semiconductors, the outmost energy band of metal is partially filled, leaving the energy needed for the electron to move into the free region quite low. The small band gap thus makes the excitation feasible with only thermal costs. In general, the conductivity of a metal depends on the density and mobility of the charge carriers, in this case, electrons. If metal layers are grown epitaxially, tension inside layers will make electrons difficult to move, and as a result, conductivity to decrease. A good way of getting rid of tension is annealing, yet the disadvantage is quite obvious. Metals tend to oxidize. The four-point probe gives us useful information about the electrical properties of a material. For most cases, the most important material property it gives us is the resistivity, but it can also be used to calculate the re sheet resistance and the thickness of thin films. This is accomplished using four collinear, equally spaced probes. This technique was first discovered by Frank Venner in 1915. He discovered the advantage of using the probes in a linear arrangement while attempting to measure the resistivity of the planet Earth. When aligned in this geometry, the voltage and resistance effects from the contacts is negligible, giving very high accuracy reading without having to correct for anything. To start, the four probes are pressed down onto the sample. The two probes on the outside, as shown in the figure, supply a current as a source and drain pair, which induces a voltage on the sheet. The inside pair of probes measure this induced voltage and thus the sheet resistance is calculated. These measured values from the four point probe give the sheet resistance by calculating the voltage to current ratio. A correction factor C is then applied to account for the geometry of the sample. The table here shows various values for C depending upon whether a circular or rectangular sample is probed. The circular samples are dependent only upon the diameter to probe spacing ratio. The rectangular samples are similarly calculated with an additional length to width ratio. The bottom left equation shows how the resistivity and thickness can be calculated from the results of the sheet resistance measurement. Either the thickness, shown as W, or the resistivity rho need to be known or assumed to use this calculation. There is an additional correction factor F to account for the thickness to probe spacing ratios. This simple technique allows for quick, easy, and accurate resistivity, thickness, and sheet resistance measurements.
it is important to know the mobility carrier concentrations and current flow tolerances of thin film transistors as they do not match the properties of the bulk material. The Hall effect measurement system contains a four contact square Hall bar and two sets of electromagnets. The electromagnets are passed over the sample and then the sample container is flipped. The process is repeated after that. The Hall voltage is measured between the contacts of the Hall bar. The Hall coefficient is found from the negative reciprocal of the elementary charge Q multiplied by the difference of the positive and negative carrier concentrations. For this experiment, we are expecting a dominant negative carrier concentration in the sample, so therefore P equals zero. Using this system, one can find the conductivity using the reciprocal of resistivity, which is calculated using the Hall voltage and the contact points of the Hall bar. The carrier mobility is found by multiplying the conductivity and the Hall coefficient together. Here is a digital Hall measurement system found in the ASU Undergraduate Materials Lab. In the upper left corner is where the user inputted data goes, such as the thickness of the sample, the amount of current to be used, the conditions for the electromagnets, and much more. The other sections are presented by the system after analysis. The system presents material properties such as the mobility, sheet resistance, resistivity, magnetoresistance, and conductivity of the sample in the results section. Now we're, tenna, we're going to talk about applications. The Hall effect used in many applications, as an example of that would be magnetometer to measure the magnetic field. Another use of Hall effect is to determine the type of semiconductor by knowing the direction of the Hall voltage if it is n-type or p-type. And a Hall effect is used to determine the mobility for, for the electrons as well as the holes. Also, it's one of the use for the Hall effect, uh, power position and motion sensing, electronic motion control, and uh, fuel injection, and wheel rotation sensing. Thank you. The data obtained from a four-point measurement is the sheet resistance. To get the resistivity, it has to be normalized by the thickness of the conductive layer and the correction factor based on the geometry of the thin film. The conductivity then is simply reciprocal of the resistivity. The data obtained from a hole measurement are density and drift speed of carrier. Mobility of a carrier is defined by the drift speed over the applied electric field. Conductivity is then calculated by multiplying carrier density with mobility and electron charge. The data or team calculated are listed below. The sample without any annealing has a conductivity about half of what silver or copper should have at room temperature. This is the result of alloying and tension inside the film. The 22nd annealing sample has slightly lower conductivity. This is the result of oxidation on the surface. The sample with 2-minute annealing has dramatic increase in conductivity because of releasing tension inside epitaxial layers. In this video, you have heard about two essential electrical characterization techniques. You now understand their modus operandi and the devices themselves. Both techniques are used to derive the conductivity of a sample. With the Hall effect measurement, Data can also be obtained about the mobility of carriers. In this presentation, you heard as well about the electrical testing of microwave annealed samples, which simulate thin film transistors. This electrical testing revealed that the sample annealed for the longest time had roughly twice the conductivity of the unannealed sample. It can be inferred that this annealing was successful in partially limiting delamination of the sample, resulting in better contact and better conductivity. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Andrew? He's my dad. <laughs> my name is... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's look. These oh, chairs are so in the way. Like, <laughs> And the information they can prove... <laughs> <laughs>